All right. Good morning. Sabbath morning. My name is Kelly, and uh, this is what God has impressed me to share for today. And it's closing out, basically. I've been sharing from 1888 Sermons by Ellen White. Let's, let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for Sabbath. Thank you for the time that we have in this wonderful way to be able to fellowship together around the world. We ask that your presence would be here guiding us in our thoughts and what we share in our words. And Lord, we pray that you would be over this study, directing it and impressing our minds with your thoughts, what you want want to tell us in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have a morning talk, October 24th, 1888, Manuscript 9. Now our meeting is drawing to a close. And not one confession has been made. There has not been a single break so as to let the Spirit of God in. Now I was saying, what was the use of our assembling here together and for our ministering brethren to come in if they are only here to shut out the Spirit of God from the people? We did hope that there would be a turning to the Lord here. Perhaps you feel that you have all you want. I have been awake since 2 o'clock, and I have been praying, but I cannot see the work making the advancement that I wish that I wish I could. I have been talking and pleading with you, and as I have told my children, although they are thousands of miles away, when I go to God in prayer for them, I know where they are standing in the Christian life, and if they are not living close to God, I am alarmed. Had Brother Kilgore been walking closely with God, he never would have walked onto the ground as he did yesterday and made the statement he did in regard to the investigation that is going on. That is, they must not bring in any new light or present any new argument, notwithstanding they have been constantly handling the word of God for years, yet they are not prepared to give a reason of the hope they have because one man is not here. Have we not all been looking into this subject? I never was more alarmed than at the present time. Now I have been taken down through the first rebellion, and I saw the workings of Satan, and I know something about this matter that God has opened before me, and should I not be alarmed? And then to take the position that because Elder Butler was not here, that that subject should not be taken up. I know this is not of God, and I shall not feel free until I have told you. Here was the enemy inculcating his ideas into the hearts of the angels, and they express these ideas that he has inculcated as their own, and Satan takes them and tells them to the other angels as the sentiments of the angels he had been working with, and thus he inculcates his ideas into their minds, and then draws them out of the angels as if their own ideas. Now I am full of pain as I view these things, and how can I help it? Do you think that when I see these things transpiring that I can keep still and say nothing when these things have been shown me? I want to tell you, my brethren, that it is not right to fasten ourselves upon the ideas of any one man. Now I want to tell you what a good brother said to me about as he was about to leave the meeting. He came to me with such a feeling of relief that Everything was settled, and our old position was all right. Well, one says, your prayers and your talk run in the channel with Dr. Wagner. I want to tell you, my brethren, that I have not taken any position. I have had no talk with the doctor before, nor with anyone on this subject, and am not prepared to take a position yet. By their fruits ye shall know them. I took my brethren and told them just where they were, but they did not believe me. They did not believe they were in any danger. If Elder Wagner's views were wrong, what business has anyone to get up and say what they did here yesterday? 
Just a moment. If Elder Wagner's views were wrong, what business has anyone to get up and say what they did here yesterday? If we have the truth, it will stand. These truths that we have been handling for years, must Elder Butler come and tell us what they are? Now, do let us have common sense. Don't let us leave such an impression on this people. One brother asked, asked me if I thought there was any new light that we should have or any new truths for us. Well, shall we stop searching the scriptures because we have the light on the law of God and the testimony of his spirit? No, brethren, I tell you in the fear of God, cease from man, cease from man whose breath is in his nostrils. How can you listen to all that I have been telling you all through these meetings and not know for yourself what is truth? If you will search the scriptures on your knees, then you will know them, and you will be able to give to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is within you. Let us come to God as reasonable beings, to know for ourselves what is truth. If you want to take a position that only one man can explain the truth, I want to tell you that this is not as God would have it. Now, I want harmony. The truth is a unit. But if we fasten to any man, we are not taking the position that God would have us take. We want to investigate every line of truth, especially if it bears the signet of God. Can you tell in what way God is going to give us new, new truth? When I have been made to pass over the history of the Jewish nation and have seen where they stumbled because they did not walk in the light, I have been led to realize that we as a people would be led where we as a people would be led. Eyes have ye, but ye see not. Ears, but ye hear not. Now, brethren, light has come to us, and we want to be where we can grasp it. And God will lead us out one by one to him. I see your danger, and I want to warn you. Now, this is the last minister's meeting we will have, unless you wish to meet together yourselves. If the ministers will not receive the light, I want to give the people a chance. Perhaps they may receive it. God did not raise me up to come across the plains to speak to you, and you sit here to question his message and question whether Sister White is the same as she used to be in years gone by. I have in many things gone way back and given you that which was given me in years past, because then you acknowledged that Sister White was right. But somehow it has changed now, and Sister White is different just like the Jewish nation. Now, we did not intimate one word that we did not want that subject taken up. We did, not, we did want an investigation, but I cannot take my position on either side until I have studied the question. Here is the danger God has shown me, that there would be a deceitful handling of the word of God. I have shown that when debaters handle these truths, unless they have the spirit of God, they handle them with their own efforts. They will, by making false theories and false statements, build up a structure that will not stand the test of God. This is what the Lord has shown me. Now, brethren, we want the truth as it is in Jesus. But when anything shall come in to shut down the gate that the waves of truth shall not come in, you will hear my voice wherever it is, if it is in California or in Europe or wherever I am, because God has given me light, and I mean to let it shine. And I have seen that precious souls who would have embraced the truth have been turned away from it because of the manner in which the truth has been handled, because Jesus was not in it. And this is what I have been pleading with you for all the time. We want Jesus what is the reason the Spirit of God does not come into our meetings? Is it because we have built a barrier around us? I speak decidedly because I want you to realize where you are standing. I want our young men to take a position, not because someone else takes it, but because they understand the truth for themselves. Here are Elder Smith and Elder Van Horn, who have been handling the truth for years, and yet, we must not touch this subject because Elder Butler was not here. Elder Kilgore, I was grieved more than I can express to you when I heard you make that remark, 
because I lost confidence in you. Now, we want to get right at what God says. All this terrible feeling, I don't believe in. It's like she's saying, I can't believe it. Let us go to the Lord for truth instead of our showing the spirit of combativeness. God has given me light, and you have acknowledged it in times past. Now, the words that were spoken here were that Elder Wagner was running this meeting. Has he not presented to you the words of the Bible? Why was it that I lost the manuscript and for two years could not find it? I'm not sure what manuscript she's referring to, perhaps Elder Wagner's manuscript? Why was it that I lost the manuscript and for two years could not find it? God has a purpose in this. He wants us to go to the Bible and get the scripture evidence. We must find it again and present it to you. But this investigation must go forward. All the object that I had, all the object I had was that the light should be gathered up and let the Savior come in. I don't expect my testimony to be is pleasing, yet I shall bear it in God's fear. God knows there is a preparation going on here to fit these ministers for the work. Unless we are converted, God does not want us. I hope Brother Morrison will be converted and handle the word of God with meekness. And the Spirit of God, handle the word of God with meekness and the Spirit of God. These truths will stand just as long as time shall last. You want the eye salve that you can see, and Jesus will help you, if you will come to him as little children. May God help us to seek him with all our hearts. That was a morning talk. Uh, and then the, there's the next one that follows it. I'll share as well. But uh, any thoughts on what we read here? Did you guys catch anything that popped off, popped out for you? The theme here, which she seems to be, which she is warning against, is that there was a, in the 1888 General Conference, when they were meeting at this time, she's addressing the fact that the 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 leaders the the leaders in, were trying to shut down discussion of righteousness by faith the message the last message of mercy because uh, it was elder butler was not here so depending on one man to to give the light is a mistake, she's saying. And when, it actually grieves her. That Go ahead. What, what you were asking about here, mm -hmm. at the time of these meetings, there had been a document that Mrs. White had looked for that many had thought would be very contrary to the message that Elders Jones and Wagner brought to the General Conference in 1888. Now, she couldn't find that that document. She came to understand that everything that Jones and Wagner were presenting were in accordance to the message that she and her husband had discussed amongst themselves for years, even right up to the time of James White's death. Now, let's remember that at this time, there had been a major schism developing because Elder Butler saw things in one regard. Elder Wagner saw them in a different regard. And the majority of the elders of the church lined up directly behind Elder Butler. And since he was not there, they didn't want to go forward. Not in all things are leadership always right. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we need to have our, our focus and our dependence strictly and totally upon God, upon his word. But we are yet to examine 
situations and positions that we may find as being contrary. We are not allowed by the word of God to be casting out people when they are presenting something that we are finding to be difficult. We are to examine, consider, study with, and seek understanding from those that might seem to be of a different opinion from us. In other words, being open to God's leading through the humblest of instruments or most unexpected. Amen. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll, uh, if anyone else have a, any other comments on it, thoughts. I like that, Dwight, that you that you knew that uh, history about losing the manuscript. I'd heard something about it before, but losing it for two years was providential somehow. That, uh, yeah, they were in agreement with Wagner and Jones. But, well, they they were, but but the other other guys thought that it would prove Wagner and Jones were wrong. Is that right? right. The the manuscript. Right. Hmm. Okay. A call to a deeper study of the word. November 1888, Manuscript 15. Dear brethren, assembled at General Conference, I entreat you to exercise the spirit of Christians. Do not let strong feelings of prejudice arise, for we should be prepared to investigate the scriptures with unbiased minds, with reverence and candor. Candor. It becomes us to pray over matters of difference in views of Scripture. Personal feelings should not be allowed to influence our words or our judgment. It will grieve the Spirit of God if you close your understanding to the light which God sends you. Dr. Wagner has spoken to us in a straightforward manner. There is precious light in what he has said. Some things presented in reference to the law in Galatians, if I fully understand his position, do not harmonize with the understanding I have had of this subject, but truth will lose nothing by investigation. Therefore, I plead for Christ's sake that you come to the living, living oracles and with prayer and humiliation seek God. Everyone should feel that he has the, the privilege of searching the scriptures for himself, and he should do this with earnest prayer that God will give him a right understanding of his word that he may know from positive evidence that he does know what is truth. I would have humility of mind and be willing to be instructed as a child. The Lord has been pleased to give me great light, yet I know that he leads other minds and opens to them the mysteries of his word. And I want to receive every ray of light that God shall send me, though it should come through the humblest of his servants. Of one thing I am certain, as Christians you have no right to entertain feelings of enmity and kindness and prejudice toward Dr. Wagner, who has presented his views in a plain, straightforward manner, as a Christian should. If he is in error, you should, in a calm, rational, Christ-like manner, seek to show him from the Word of God where he is out of harmony with its teachings. If you cannot do this, you have no right as Christians to pick flaws, to criticize, to work in the dark, to prejudice minds with your objections. This is Satan's way of working. What she describes here is what was going on in the, in the, in the general conference. They were meeting in, their, in the evening after the meetings. They were getting together in their rooms and visiting together and jesting and joking about the, what was going on at the conference and about Jones and Wagner. They were ridiculing them and the message. Wow. Some interpretations of Scripture given by Dr. Wagner I do not regard as correct, but I believe him to be perfectly honest in his views, and I would respect his feelings and treat him as a Christian gentleman. I have no reason to think that he is not as much esteemed of God as are any of our brethren, my brethren, and I shall regard him as a Christian brother, so long as there is no evidence that he is unworthy. 
the fact that he honestly holds some views of Scripture differing from yours or mine is no reason why we should treat him as an offender or as a dangerous man and make him the subject of unjust criticism. We should not raise a voice of censure against him or his teaching, teachings unless we can present weighty reasons for doing so and show him that he is in error. No one should feel at liberty to loose rein to sorry. No one should feel at liberty to give loose rein to the combative spirit. There are some who desire to have a decision made at once as to what is the correct view on the point under discussion. And this would please Elder Butler. It is advised that this question be settled at once. But are minds prepared for such a decision? I could not sanction this course, because our brethren are exercised by a spirit which moves their feelings and stirs their impulses so as to control their judgment. While under so much excitement as now exists, they are not prepared to make safe decisions. I know it would be dangerous to denounce Dr. Wagner's position as wholly erroneous. This would please the enemy. I see the beauty of truth in the presentation of the righteousness of Christ in relation to the law as the doctor has placed it before us. You say, many of you, it is light and truth, yet you have not presented it in this light heretofore. Is it not possible that through earnest, prayerful searching of the scriptures, he has seen still greater light on some points. That which has been presented harmonizes perfectly with the light which God has been pleased to give me during all the years of my experience. If our ministering brethren would accept the doctrine which has been presented so clearly, the righteousness of Christ in connection with the law, and I know they need to accept this, their prejudices would not have a controlling power and the people would be fed with their portion of meat in due season. Dwight, if you can hear me, hear this, when, uh, you, when you get back, uh, switch your screen. Let us, let us take our Bibles and with humble prayer and a teachable spirit, come to the great teacher of the word. Let us pray as did David. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Psalm 119, verse 18. I see no excuse for the wrought-up state of feeling that has been created at this meeting. This is the first time I have had opportunity to listen to anything in reference to this subject. That's interesting. That Ellen White, the person so connected to God. This is the first time that she had opportunity to listen to anyone else, basically, is what she's saying on this subject. I've had no conversation in regard to it with my son, W.C. White, with Dr. Wagner, or with Elder A.T. Jones. At this meeting, I have heard for the first time Dr. Wagner's reasons for his position. The message is coming from your president, which is interesting, she says, your president, not our president of the General Conference, Butler. The messages coming from your president at Battle Creek are calculated to stir you up, to make hasty decisions, and to make decided positions. But I warn you against doing this. You are not now calm. There are many who do not know what they believe. It is perilous to make decisions upon any controverted point without dispassionately considering all sides of the question. Exciting feelings will lead to rash, sorry, excited feelings will lead to rash movements. It is certain that many come to this meeting with false impressions and perverted opinions. They, they have imaginings that have no foundation in truth. Even if the position which they have held upon the two laws is truth, the spirit of truth, will not countenance any such measures to defend it, as many of you would take. The spirit that attends the truth should be such as will represent the author of truth, says the Apostle James. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. 
But if ye have bitter envies and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion, and every work and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown of them that make peace. Sowing righteousness in peace. There's a word I like called irenic. I may have spoken of it before. I-R-E-N-I-C. And that's, that's what is described here. Irenic means to move toward peace, to seek peace. And that is that describes Jesus for sure. The Prince of Peace. And that's how we are to sow in righteousness in peace. The truth must be presented as it is in Jesus. If there are any among us who become stirred up because ideas contrary from what they have believed are presented in this meeting, then stop your unsanctified criticisms and candidly investigate the subject, and it will sanctify the soul. Two years ago, while in Switzerland, I was addressed in the night season by a voice which said, Follow me. I thought I arose and followed my guide. I seemed to be in the tabernacle at Battle Creek and my guide gave me instructions in regard to many things at the conference. I will give in substance a few things that were said. The Spirit of God has not had a controlling influence in this meeting. The Spirit that controlled the Pharisees is coming in among this people, who have been greatly favored of God. Many things were spoken, which I will not now present to you. I was told that there was need of great spiritual revival among the men who bear responsibilities in the cause of God. There was not perfection in all points on either side of the question under discussion. We must search the scriptures for evidences of truth. There are but few, even of those who claim to believe it, that comprehend the third angel's message, and yet this is the message for this time. It is present truth, but how few Pick up this message in its true bearing and present it to the people in its power. With many it has but little force. Said my guide, There is much light yet to shine forth from the law of God and the gospel of righteousness. This message, understood in its true character and proclaimed in the Spirit, will lighten the earth with its glory. The great Decisive question is to be brought before all nations, tongues, and peoples. The great decisive question would be whether to repent or not, I think. That is the great question. Will we be converted? The closing work of the third angel's message will be attended with a power that will send the rays of the Son of Righteousness into all the highways and byways of life, and decisions will be made for God as supreme governor. His law will be looked upon as the rule of his government. Many who claim to believe the truth will change their opinions in times of peril and will take the side of transgressors of God's law in order to escape persecution. There will be a great humbling of hearts before God on the part of everyone who remains faithful and true to the end. But Satan will so work upon the unconsecrated elements of the human mind that many will not accept the light in God's appointed way. I entreat you, brethren, be not like the Pharisees who were blinded with spiritual pride, self-righteousness, and self-sufficiency, and who, because of this, were forsaken of God. For years I have been receiving instructions and warnings that this was the danger to our people. Says the scripture, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. 
for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. There is positive danger that some who profess to believe the truth will be found in a position similar to that of the Jews. They take the ideas of men they are, they are associated with, not because by searching the scriptures they conscientiously accept the teachings in the doctrine, not because they conscientiously accept the, the teachings in doctrine as truth. I entreat you to make God your, tr your trust. Idolize no man. Depend upon no man. Let not your love of man hold them in places of trust that they are not qualified to fill to the glory of God. For man is finite and erring, liable to be controlled by his own opinions and feelings. Self-esteem and righteousness are coming in upon us, and many will fall because of unbelief and unrighteousness, for the grace of Christ is not ruling in the hearts of many. We are to be ever searching for the truth as for hidden treasures. I entreat you, close not the door of the heart for fear of some ray of light shall come to you. You need greater light. You need a clearer, clearer understanding of the truth which you carry to the people. If you do not see light yourselves, you will close the door. If you, if you can, you will prevent the rays of light from coming to the people. Let it not be said of this highly favored people, ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. All these lessons are given for the benefit of those upon whom the ends of the world are come. I have shown that Jesus will reveal to us precious old truths in a new light, if we are ready to receive them. But they must be received in the very way in which the Lord shall choose to send them, with humble, softened hearts, with respect and love for one another. Search your Bibles. The light may not come in accordance with the plans that men may devise. But all who reverence the word of God just as it reads, all who do his will to the best of their ability, will know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, notwithstanding the efforts of the enemy to confuse minds and to make uncertain the word of God. God calls upon every man's attention. God calls every man's attention to his living oracles. Let no man quench the Spirit of God by resting the Scriptures, by putting human interpretations upon his inspired word. And let no one pursue an unfair course, keep in the dark, not willing to open their ears to hear, and yet free to comment and quibble and sow their doubts of that which they will not candidly take the time to hear. Let men be careful how they handle the word of inspiration which has been preserved for ages through the power of God. If men were themselves controlled by the Holy Spirit, they would bring heart and soul to the task, searching and digging in the minds of God for precious horror. They would be eager to come into harmony with the writings of inspired men. If they are not controlled by the Spirit of God, they will give evidence of this by caviling over his word and by sitting in judgment upon its teachings, just as did the Jews. We should guard against the influence of men who have trained themselves as debaters, for they are in continual danger of handling the word of God deceitfully. There are men in our churches all through the land who will pervert the meaning of the scripture to make a sharp point or overcome an, appointant, uh, an opponent. They do not reverence the sacred word. They put their own construction upon its utterances. Christ is not formed within the hope of glory. They are educated critics, but spiritual truth can only be spiritually discerned. These men are ever ready and equipped to oppose at a moment's notice anything that is contrary to their own opinions. They handle the scriptures in an unwise way and bring self into everything they do. And the servant of the Lord must not, must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, 
who are taken captive by him at his will. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 to 26. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but must teach the word of God in the manner that God has ordained. Any other way is not God's way and will create confusion. Brother Morrison is a debater. He is a man who has not had a daily living experience in the meekness and lowliness of Christ. He is in danger of making false issues and treating them as realities. He will create strife, and the result will be dissensions and bickerings. He has many things to overcome, and if he fails to overcome them, he will make a shipwreck of faith, as did Elder Canwright. It is dangerous to cherish feelings of self-sufficiency. He must have the meekness of Christ. The sanctifying power of truth must be brought into the sanctuary of his soul. Then he will be a polished instrument in the hands of God to do his work. It is a matter of deep concern to us whether or not we are perfecting a Christian character, growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we are daily learners, <coughs> excuse me. If we are daily learners in the school of Christ, we shall be daily obtaining an experience in Christian life and shall not be self-sufficient and self-exalted. We shall be as humble as little children, and there will be a nourishing power in our words, a nourishing power in our words, which will drop as a dew. The fruits of righteousness, sown in peace of them that make peace, will then appear. Growth in grace will give Brother Morrison increased ability to comprehend the deep mysteries of the gospel, those who are in so great a degree unacquainted with Christ are ignorant of the spirit they cherish. They will be dry and Christless. The knowledge of Christ and his word is the foundation and fullness of all knowledge. Many workers are not now fitted for the position of trust they occupy. They must be transformed by the grace of Christ. God wants to give our brethren another spirit. Without this change, they will carry the spirit of irreverence for God and his living oracles into their work. And if this mold is put upon the work, it will dishonor God. The subduing, softening influence of the grace of Christ must fashion and mold character. Then it will be a pleasure to deal justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. The debating spirit has come into the ranks of Sabbath keepers to, keep the to take the place of the Spirit of God. They have placed finite men where God should be, but nothing can suffice for us but to have Christ dwell in our hearts by faith. The truth, truth must become ours. Christ must be our Savior by an experimental knowledge. We should know by faith what it is to have our sins pardoned and to be born again. We must have a higher, deeper wisdom than man's to guide us amid the perils surrounding our pathway. The Spirit of Christ must be in us just as the blood is in the body, circulating, circulating through it as a vitalizing power. Our greatest fear should be that we may be found rebelling against God's word which is to be our guide amid all the perils of the last days. We must be sure that we are on the Lord's side, that we have the truth as it is in Jesus. With the grace of God in the soul, we may be secure anywhere, strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We would discourage the discipline that tends to make persons debaters. We urge you not to connect young men who are learning to be teachers of Bible truth with one who has a strong debating spirit, for they will surely receive the wrong mold of character. The habitual debater is so accustomed to be clouding the, and turning aside evidence and even the scriptures from the true meaning to win his point, that everything that does not strike him favorably and is not in harmony with his ideas, he will combat, caviling at God's inspired word. There is too little dependence upon God. When God would have a special work done for the advancement of the truth, he will impress men to work in the minds of truth with prayerful earnestness to discover the precious ore. 
These men will have Christ-like perseverance. They will not fail or be discouraged. They will, they will sink self out of sight in Jesus. Men will go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah to prepare the way for the second advent of Jesus Christ. Men will go forward in the spirit. Where did, where did that go? Men will go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah. Not one person, not another prophet, but every everyone that's converted to the truth will go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah to prepare Jesus Christ, prepare the way for the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is their work to make crooked things straight. Some things must be torn down. Some things must be built up. The old treasures, which must be reset in a framework of truth. They are to preach God's word. Their testimony must not be molded by the opinions and ideas that have been regarded as sound, but by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. They are to lift up Christ and call sinners to repentance. They are to practice the graces of Christ, to pursue a straightforward course, breaking down skepticism and urging upon all their personal responsibility to be kind and courteous, to do good and to win souls to Jesus. The scripture should not be treated in a debating style. <clears throat> Those who have educated themselves as debaters have so increased their spirit of combativeness that they are ready to cavil over the word of God, to resist and oppose everything that disagrees with their ideas or opinions. They are in their element when an opportunity is offered for them to question and criticize. For it is natural for them to be ready to battle at any time. They will play upon words, misinterpret, and misstate because this has become a settled habit with them, a second nature. Nothing is safe in their hands. Now, the Lord desires that those who are in this condition should be converted, that they become as little children, simple, meek, teachable, and Christ-like. We must have the power of God to soften and change the rugged traits of our character, that we may be susceptible to the influence of truth. We should look upon word of God with reverence as something sacred. The, that one, I, I just had a thought on uh, looking at the word of God with reverence as something sacred. The pastor that first uh, brought me into the church back in 1976, Pastor Donald Watson, in 76, out of retirement for the second time, associate pastor, travels all the way from Australia to come here or to go to Edmonton, Alberta, because his daughter lived there and he ended up being my pastor. But he taught me something that to this day I practice. And that he, he said when he was in school or wherever he was studying, there were lots of books and he had to always arrange them when he was studying the song. And without fail, he never put another book on top of the Bible. I practice that with the Bible and as well the Spirit of Prophecy books. I, to have a reverence for them includes little things like that. The, the danger in that is for me to become pharisaical, legalist, when I see someone else doing it. I can hardly resist reaching over and taking that book off the Bible. I Sometimes I do just quietly. They notice that I do that, but... It's something good to practice, I think. That's something sacred. Christ is true, and without him we know nothing as we ought to know it. We are lacking in the spirituality of true religion. When the Jews took the first step in the rejection of Christ, they took a dangerous step. When afterward evidence accumulated that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah, they were too proud to acknowledge that they had erred. So with the people of our day who reject the truth, they do not take time to investigate candidly with earnest prayer the evidences of the truth, and they oppose that which they do not understand. Just like the Jews, 
They take it for granted that they have all the truth and feel a sort of contempt for anyone who should oppose, suppose that they had more correct ideas than they themselves of what is truth. All the evidence produced, they decide, shall not weigh a straw with them. And they tell others that the doctrine is not true. And afterward, when they see light, see when they see as light evidence they were so forward to condemn they have too much pride to say i was wrong they still cherish doubt and unbelief and are too proud to acknowledge their convictions because of this they will take steps that lead to results of which they have never dreamed those who have not been in the habit of thinking and investigating for themselves believe certain doctrines because their associates with them in the work believe them. They resist the truth without going to the scriptures for themselves to learn what is truth. Because those in whom they have had confidence oppose the light, they oppose it, not knowing they are rejecting the counsel of God against themselves. God has a work to do in our world that many finite minds do not see or understand. And when God unfolds truth to his people, it does not come in harmony with their ideas, and it does not come in harmony with their, his, their ideas. Sorry. Many are ready to despise and reject it. I entreat you, brethren, reverence your Bible, plead with God for light, fast and pray in your closet upon your knees. Ask God to lead you into all truth. Tell him that you want the truth as it is in Jesus. It is not wise for one of these young men to commit himself to a decision at this meeting where opposition rather than investigation is the order of the day. The scriptures must be your study. Then you will know that you have the truth. Open your heart that God might write the truth upon its tablets. One who would be a teacher of sacred things should not go forth to work with the people without a full assurance that he has the truth. He should not go forth feeling that perhaps the doctrines which he advocates may not at all, may not all be substantiated by the Bible. Anything short of a full conviction that what he presents is truth will make his preaching powerless unless he has the presumption to put forth mere assertions as conclusive evidence. This is unfair, and yet this has often been done by sharp debaters. You should give your authority to the people from God's word. You should not believe any doctrine simply because another says it is truth. You should not believe it because Elder Smith or Elder Kilgore or Elder Van Horn or Elder Haskell says it is truth, but because God's voice has declared it in his living oracles. And I would say declared it in his living oracles to you personally. Truth will triumph gloriously, and those who have received the truth because God has revealed it in his word will triumph with it. Those who neglect to search for evidence for themselves and rely upon what someone else says will not have root in themselves and will not be able to give a reason of the hope that is within them. God command, God's commands must be heard. He says, Go forward. There are large fields to be explored. There are mines to be discovered in which are precious jewels of truth. Let no one close these mines and cease to dig for the truth, lest they should, come, should have to cast aside some preconceived idea or opinion. No, brethren, we want to know the truth. And God forbid that any of you should turn from precious truths simply because you do not want to believe them. No one must be permitted to close the avenues whereby the light of truth shall come to the people. As soon as this shall be attempted, God's Spirit will be quenched, for that Spirit is constantly at work to give fresh and increased light to His people through His Word. Let the love of Christ reign in our hearts here. Let all yield themselves to that heavenly power which alone can create unity by quelling selfish ambitions and human pride. When the Spirit of God comes in, love will take the place of variance, because Jesus is love. If his Spirit were cherished here, our meeting would be like a stream in the desert.
Has the truth as it is in Jesus been received into our heart? Have the, have the mind of God and his ways become our mind and our ways? Is the law of God our standard? If it is, its principles will be wrought out in our life. Wherever the love of Jesus reigns, there is peace with God, joy in God, and the love and joy are reflected to others. We cannot afford to be deceived by a semblance, a form. The truth of the Bible may be read, and we may think that a form of words will accomplish that, which only the Spirit of God can accomplish by by its converting, transforming power. We may hold certain points of truth firmly and yet refuse to let in any fresh rays of light which God may send to show us the beauty of the truth. It is dangerous for us to take a step in uncertainty. We should not reject or oppose the views of our fellow laborers because they do not agree with our ideas until we have used every means in our power to find out whether or not they are truth, comparing Scripture with Scripture. If we do otherwise, a combative spirit will arise at the first approach of anything that differs from our views. We may be led on by the enemy to take a position against the truth because it does not come in a way that suits us, that a way to suit us. And in the spirit of the deceived Jews, we shall resist the light which God sends. And that light, instead of being the blessing which heaven meant it to be to us, to advance us in spirituality and in the knowledge of God, will become a stumbling block over which we shall be constantly falling. We shall become irritated and indignant, for the enemy is in our heart. The enmity is in our heart against God's truth. If evidence is afterwards presented from the scriptures, it will not be received by him who has rejected light. Oh, sorry. If evidence is afterwards presented from the scriptures, it will not be received by him who has rejected light. The men of Nazareth opened their hearts to unbelief, and as a result, they rejected Christ. The combative spirit will rise against the truth. An unfair means, <clears throat> unfair means will be taken to the influence of others. Taken to influence others and to make it of none effect. The Lord would have our intellect sanctified, elevated, ennobled, that we may distinguish truth from error and bring the truth into the soul temple, that it may exercise an influence upon our spirit and character. The most terrible thing that would come to us as people is the fatal deception that was the ruin of Chorazin and Bethsaida. They had great light, great privileges and blessings. Jesus was with them, but they did not appreciate or receive the light he gave them. They were not made better by it. I would warn all my ministering brethren, and especially the young, never to touch an infidel book, never to present infidel cavils. Some have thought it essential to understand these, that they might know how to meet objectors. In our college, debaters have been educated by considering objections to the Bible. This has sometimes been done by our students for the purpose of bringing the light of truth in contrast with the infidel arguments. In times when the soul is under temptation, Satan causes the seeds of doubt that are thus sown to germinate, and they blossom into fruit. Discipline of this order is a dangerous discipline for our students. Never give the least sanction to the presentation of infidel arguments. Turn from them as you would from a serpent, for there is concealed in them a sting that would wound the soul. This counsel here... It, so where's the balance in this? Because we're not to be having our heads in the sand. We are to know the truth. I guess, is the idea to know the truth so that when error comes... We don't have to read all the books about all the objections, go by it point by point and answer every objection. Rather than give the objections the light of day, I see that, that, that when we're able to uh, 
know the truth for ourselves and share it in a con, with a, with conviction that it is true that that answers every objection if that makes sense principles and practices must be strictly guarded habits are formed by training the mind in a certain action <clears throat> What we do once, we do more readily the second time, and we learn to pursue a certain course by force of habit. If we are trained to cavil, we shall be trained to doubt and uncertainty. When Jesus is not abiding in the soul, the natural tendency to doubt, question, and criticize will extend to God's word, as well as to the testimonies, and the habit of caviling, caviling will ruin the soul. In place of godly fear, and holy reverence in handling the scriptures, there will be a forward, bold assumption, assumption, a proud, boasting spirit that loves to strive, and the most sacred things will be lightly regarded. The most sacred feelings will be trampled upon. God has but little to do with such workers. We are, whole, we are to hold fast every jot and tittle of the truth revealed to us in the living oracles, but we are not to think that we now have a knowledge of all the truth that there is for us. We may well ask whether we are drifting. Even the inspiration of the scriptures has been under the judgment of finite man, and they have dealt with the oracles of God in the same manner as they have with the testimonies of the Spirit of God, cutting and carving them at will as it pleased them, and in so doing, making of none effect. Those who do this know not what they are doing. Unless there is a more earnest seeking of the Lord, unless there is zealous work of repentance, darkness will come upon our minds, and the darkness will be in proportion to the light which has not been appreciated. Unless there is less of self and more of the Holy Spirit to take control of the minds and hearts of men who have stood in the foremost rank, there will be a failure on their part to walk out in harmony with the opening providences of God, of God, they will question and quibble over any light that the Lord may send, and will turn away from the teachings of Christ, confiding in themselves and trusting in their supposed knowledge of what is truth. As the Jews refused the light of the world, so many of those who claim to believe the present truth will refuse light which the Lord will send to his people. Revelation 3, verses 14 to 21 are quoted. Shall its solemn warnings have no weight with us? Never let Satan have the control of your powers. As a people, we need humility. In this conference, we are sowing seeds that will yield a harvest, and the results will be as enduring as eternity. Young workers are watching to see what spirit you manifest in this meeting and how you treat those who hold views that differ from yours. You know that precious light has shone forth in connection with the law of God, as the righteousness of Christ has been presented with that law. Dr. Wagner has opened to you precious light, not new, but old light, which has been lost sight of by many minds, and is now shining forth in clear rays. Let a spirit of fairness come in. Though you think his ideas upon this subject may not be all sound, do not make false statements. Do not misstate his words. Place him in no false light. Maintain the spirit of Christ. Keep the commandments of God. Love God supremely and your neighbor as yourself. God's law reads, Thou shalt not bear false witness. I hope none will go from this meeting repeating the false statements that have been circulated here or carrying with them the spirit which has been here manifested. It has not been of Christ. It has come from another source. All who have the truth can afford to be fair. See to it, my brethren, that words coming from finite men, man, are not received as the voice of God. We want to be Christians. We should pray and study our Bibles more. Nothing is safe that does not bear the credentials of heaven. Let God be true and every man a liar. His word is infinite, and every man will find that it is sure and steadfast forever. I know it's hard to add to the spirit of prophecy readings, but 
it just seems that this one here is so timely for the time that we're in right now, moving forward, to be careful to study for ourselves, to have our own personal conviction of what is truth, to not, I know myself, often I'll want to send a link, here, you watch this, or here, read this, or, but to be able to tell someone personally of my experience with the conviction of truth is powerful for each one of us to witness with that spirit of Christ and gentleness and meekness, hum humility. That's powerful. I know, I know directing or pointing others to sources of information is profitable and, and good. But we each also need to be able to do it ourselves to give a reason for the hope that's in us. Now, I've, I've, I'd like to take a few minutes, if 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 it's all right, to uh, perhaps if anyone has a personal testimony. I was thinking of God's work in their life, whether it's just a an instant, not not your whole life, but. Something particular that that uh, you knew God was working. I guess I'm bringing that up because something really quite. It's like when God leads us, He gives us He gives us uh, way marks along the way in our in our walk in our travel, that signpost sort of thing that that He'll cause something to happen, uh, the way things come together that it could only be God proving to us, encouraging us that we're on the right track, we're on the right path in agreement with God. Well, I've shared in past meetings and I've debated, <laughs> being a debater of myself, I've debated whether it would be uh, good or, or bad to share what my experience has been a little bit. And I will. So having been an Adventist for over 30, 40 years, during that time, part of that time, I I went back and forth in my conversion or experience with God from addictions, then to the church, Sabbath school teacher, deacon, so on. Um, and then there was a period of time where the, where, my Christian experience had been become uh, nominal and and usual, and a, more of a more of a habit of going to church than. And I found that after going to evangelistic efforts and so on of the church, that that they became by rote. That I knew it was coming next. I I could repeat it for anyone. And it became stale is the word I think of. My my Christian experience became stale. And I was like, is there nothing more? Is this it? And uh, that's when I began to learn about the truths we're studying now with connected with the 2520, the lines of truth in the Bible, Palmoni and so on. And my experience was made it, it brought life again. So that uh, that was a period like from 2012 to about 2017, 2018, and there was division and and I I just watched. Like Ellen White said, she didn't have enough time to take a position, and so I didn't take a position, but I watched. And along the way. God just gave certain indications that I was on the right track and I was only concerned about myself. I wasn't trying to figure it out for anyone else. So uh, taking kind of a neutral position, which can be unsafe, but until we can have a decision ourselves, <clears throat> a personal conviction of the truth, it's safer to just 
be neutral until then. Okay. So from then, in 2020, the end of 2020, around November, after COVID had isolated all of us from each other, from church, from fellowship, um, something happened. Now, I've mentioned before that I'd gone through treatment centers for addiction in, in the 90s. And then the light coming on, uh, April 2001, and getting it. Like, I knew that this time God was going to keep me. With fear and trepidation, I, trepidation, I, I knew it in the fear of God. God put, God put the fear of God in me. And uh, things went really good for about 20 years. And then in 2020, did not see it coming, got addicted to drugs and alcohol again. I couldn't believe it. But not caring for my own soul, I went into that for two and a half years, and it uh, ended in not good ways, like homelessness and totally financially devastated. Um, and that was not too long ago. And that's when I say about God allowing the circumstances that to come into our life that that are the natural consequences of our choices to to do their work of beating us up, of humbling us, of yeah, humbling us. And once that happens, so then. Long story short, August, I was living in my truck in Calgary, and, you know, it was a good experience, really, because now I have so much more understanding, so much more compassion for people in whatever situation they may, may find themselves. I, I don't look down. I sit down with them, learn their name, a little bit of their story make them feel like a person again. So that happened for me. Someone did that for me in August. So now not being homeless, slowly regaining my mind, my brain. <clears throat> and part of that process for me, like I like to say my heart is in the right place, but my mind is a mess. And to get that mess straightened out, I've reached out for addictions counseling again. Um, but they're not sure of, of which way to go with that even because people will say, well, you don't need to go to go there. You can just do that with God and prayer and so on. And we can. I mean, God can heal us like that. But So I chose to register, apply for treatment, to go to a treatment center again. And the most thing, the punchline here, is that it's a process. You do all jump through all these hoops, and and uh, they make sure that you're sincere and so on. Well, yesterday, yesterday I I was able to complete the day before Wednesday. I was able to complete the the last hurdle, and uh, in the application process. And so then they were able to give me an intake date. I wrote it down as they were saying it, and then I just stared at it. I was like. Wow, July 18th. And uh, those of us who have been studying these these things about numbers in the Bible and Palmoni, July 18th, 187, it's a significant number. I don't even understand half of it, really, other than it was God saying to me, he's got me. So that's pretty cool. I wanted to share that with you guys. Look like you're in a, a pretty nice place there, a calming well, atmosphere out in the woods. Yeah, I'm just on my my back deck. Well, yeah, where I'm oh, where I am now. Yeah, it's in okay. northern BC. And wow, oh, great! What? I said great. Yeah, it's good. It is. I've. It's it's uh, everything I've wanted for my 
whole life, ever since I knew about country living, this was where I was headed. But God had to kind of pull me out of the fire, you know. Had to, He took yeah. everything away, or allowed everything <laughs> to leave me in the city. Otherwise, I would have still been there, you know, something holding me, you know, a good job, a good company, uh, people, family, whatever that holds us there. But, yeah, he took it away. And this is the blessing of my life, a place to heal and return to God. Yeah, it's it's really nice. I, this is only the second time I've done, like, with a video background, usually just a picture or something. But I wanted to share with people that, how blessed it is to live in the country, and how peaceful and quiet it is. Yeah, it's so quiet that if when I'm sitting here in the evening on my deck, just just moving like this is loud, and my breathing is loud. <laughs> the sound of my breath is even loud. It's the sound of silence is so healing. Anyone else would like to comment or something before we close? William, were you able to find the quote we were thinking of yesterday on in the Great Controversy about love? Maybe that puts you on the spot. Don't worry about it. It was a quote that Ellen White talks about. She refers to it uh, as talking about love so much that it becomes, I don't know, it's not the right word, but yeah. it reminds me, Nambi. No, I, I, I haven't found it yet. I okay. was looking a little bit while ago. Trying to find it, but I haven't found it. I think the love of this love of Jesus that they, some of it, like like this love of Jesus that they promote or something like. I ain't, I ain't, I don't know for sure. I've been trying to find a word that I can bring me to it, but when I do, I'll let you know. It, okay, yeah, I think it might have love, love, love. Like that, we preach love, love, love. Maybe yeah, this but, love, yeah. love, love they preach or something. Like this love, love, love of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've been trying to find it, but I'll find it. I'll let you know. All right. Okay. Well, uh, I used to I know. It. We'll I close. used to. Well, go ahead, William. I used to. I used to have it at hand at all times because. I run across people who's always preaching the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and I just laid it down. Sen- senti- like sentimentalism, is that word perhaps in it, the quote? Or love, uh, it's like a sick sentimentalism. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find it. Yeah. But yet, but yes, that, that I've I've met that uh, thought many times when trying to share something that is difficult, and people will say, "Oh, that's just going to scare people away." We need more love in the church. Well, yes, we do, but it's the love of Christ, and love love of Christ is not some fuzzy soft thing. And how do we get love? How do we get that love of Jesus? We we. I usually I usually bring up Second Peter chapter one, nineteen to um, twenty two, where it talks about you have to you, you prophesy in the in the day star thought day star will form in their heart. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. What was the What was the first part of that? Wait a minute, I said I'll bring it up. Uh, sure. Right Till the day star arise in our hearts. Till the day star. How do we get that love? That that's a good question for to think about. How do we get that love? Yeah, you get that love. I mean, it, it's a miracle. But there's practical it. things. I think. Yeah, okay. this is what I see it. I mean, in chapter one of Second Peter, it says, "We have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto we shall we more." Where unto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day, day, day dawneth and the day star rises in your heart, knowing this first, 
that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecies came not in old times by the will of men, but the holy men of God, <clears throat> speak, speaking as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I figure that's the only way I know. You, you, I mean, to me, that's the way we all should, you know, I mean, that's my opinion on it. So, <laughs> you know what? Well, that's the word of God. Uh, yeah. A more sure word of prophecy is is a, is a, that the main point? What you're what you're thinking that we have a more sure word of prophecy that the, right. the day star yeah. rises in our hearts. That's right. That leads yeah, us pro- to the day star, which right. is Jesus Christ, right? Hmm. I mean, I found I found that experience going to Revelation seminars when I was my first revelation seminar when I was 17 years old, when I heard the prophecies, it, God became more real, more yeah. real and more real. Yeah. yeah. It, and these it affects lines, our and he, life. And these lines, they just prove all that, all that. Cause every line it, you could see it. You can see Jesus in every line. I don't know why they say that he can't, but you can, you can see him. Moving, moving the wheels of Ezekiel. Mm, mm. Especially like I, I just love Palmoni, the wonderful yeah. numberer. Yeah. In Daniel, <clears throat> and in the verse Daniel eight thirteen, um, and how that also connects to Fibonacci sequence and the fingerprint of God in creation, yeah. all of creation. We see it. Well, and and uh, yeah. and actually, he he the the um the the um astrologers and all of them said it was the finger of God, and that was the and he and that was the lice that he touched touched the sand and it turned into lice. You know, the finger mm-hmm. of God. So. How, how is that connected? I'm sorry. The finger of God touches the sand. They it turns into light. The, yeah, the, the, magi- the, the um, magicians and the astrologers told told Pharaoh that this is the finger of God when he took when the, oh. when Aaron hit the hit the stave hit the um, took the rod and hit the sand dirt and it turned into mm. light. They right. said it was the finger of God. He's talking about the power of God, in other words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they. I guess they were faced with a, yeah. a, a undeniable evidence that this is the finger of God. That's right. And who can deny it? <laughs> Nobody can deny it. No. No. But anyway. And uh, yeah. Well, thanks. Uh, you speak of lines, and like I just shared, the fact that I had been waiting. Actually, uh, I also have prostate cancer, so it's not a big deal, really. Uh, so many guys have it. It's the waiting line is so long to get in, even for the radiation treatments. But we can do other things as well to boost our immune system. All, all this, I understand these things. But so here I am. I'm faced with a a choice or a decision to make. Do I go for radiation treatments to take care of this before going for addiction treatments? Or do I go, which order shall I do this? And I I just left it in God's hands. I said, God, whichever one is first past the post, if I get the call for one or the other, that's where I'm going to go first. Well, it was like, it's been a, almost two months since uh, the conclusion, conclusive diagnosis, and now for the treatment to follow, it's been over two months. I haven't had a call, and I wasn't going to try and sway that by calling them. I just left it. They said, "Wait for a call." So I've been waiting, and uh, same thing with the addic- with the addictions treatment center. That process started back in January, and uh, so then. The day comes, and I 
and they say July 18th. It was, it was significant to me. It was like God's, uh, God's, it was like seeing the finger of God in it, right? The hand of God in it. July 18th. For your July yeah. For yeah. 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 July 18th is the day that is my intake date when I will begin uh, the addictions treatment. This month? Yeah. This year? This year. This year? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. July 18th, 2024. What a date. What a date to be picked on to go in. <laughs> and it wasn't my <laughs> choice, <July> right? <laughs> it was <laughs> just, just waiting for it. Yeah. And when I, yeah. And I wrote it wrote it down on paper as she was telling me what day, and I just stared at it. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. And then I, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's a, probably like when you saw the Jeff on the on the uh, license plate. Oh, yes. Yeah. The, 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 the that, Jeff. That, that, the, the experience I had, if everyone hasn't heard it before, was – when when the division was coming, <clears throat> uh, developing between the two groups of uh, Parminder and Tess and, and Jeff, Future for America and the other one, I took the posi- a neutral position. I wasn't sure. You know, I wanted to do the right thing. And praying that morning before going to church, please, God, show me. You know, I was struggling with it. Halfway to church, I stopped at a light. Stop at a light in the car in front of me. It's their license plate in the city of a million people says the Jeff. <laughs> so you know, I, it was like <laughs> the Jeff. Okay, uh, I, I got you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, I had a, I had a experience where, where I was getting, I was getting bombarded from saying, you know. You you should apologize for this or that for July 18th and all that. And I said, some said to me, said, I don't have. My wife said something to me, and I said, uh, I said, why would I? Why would I um, deny the way God has led us? Why would I deny that? And it just brought to reality that. We're not to deny the way God leads us. You know? Amen. And because there ain't nowhere else to go. Where else can you go? You can't go nowhere. After hearing this message, there's nowhere else to go. No. It reminds me of those that Ellen White's vision in of going to heaven and some falling off the path, denying the light that was behind them, yeah, taking their eyes off, yeah, and falling off to deny the light behind us. There's what are some of the what are some of the evidences that God was leading us up to that point, up to up until July 18th, on on the day day of the July 18th. Some come to mind right away for me is uh, the placing of the ad in Nashville <clears throat> in the newspaper. So many things happened there that if God had not put his hand over it, it wouldn't have happened. Like for the newspaper to even publish that ad, it never would have passed <laughs> the desk of the editor. It just wouldn't have. So it got published. And then I, don't, I forget how much money was involved in that ad, but the newspaper returned all the money. It never cost a cent, and it went around the world. I think he said something like seventy thousand dollars or something. I don't know. This is up there. Yeah. It's it's yeah I yeah. It was quite a bit. And then and then the uh, the selling of of the school in Arkansas. What was it? A hundred and. 187 days after? No. Yeah. Things like that. Uh, just, and was 18.7% under the asking price, I think, is what they sold it for. 
But yeah, that, it's definitely like it's so enriching to understand that part of the scripture of Talmoni, the wonderful number. When I said mm-hmm. about the reference reference to Daniel Daniel eight thirteen and Fibonacci sequence. So Fibonacci sequence he was an Italian mathematician, I believe. But he found the the pattern in in everything in in uh, from the seashell, the circle, the way it is, to the galaxies. They all have the same mathematical <clears throat> mathematical ratio. It goes one plus one. The number before it is two, or after it. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Three plus one plus two is three. Three plus five is eight. Eight plus five is thirteen. So it goes one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen. Well, Fibonacci sequence, Daniel eight thirteen. The wonderful number. Do you, does do you see the connection there? Sure, sure did. Or, yeah, I'm sure a lot of us have heard that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any anyone else? Uh, just we. I guess we can wrap it up. But I'll I'll still wait if someone's just hesitating. Something to share. Okay. Well, the mosquitoes are getting starting to swarm. And BB's <laughs> BB's not liking it. Okay. Well, let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your mercy, your love. Enduring mercy that endures forever. And pray for each one of us. Let us not become discouraged when we are faced with the trials of our fallen natures, the trials of this world, the trials that come from our interactions with others. Let us help us to let those trials have their appointed work in bringing us closer to you. And we pray for those that are still trying to think of things through. Each one of us are, that you will guide us and that we can trust your hand in our lives in that process. And thank you for the uh, significant things that happen in our lives that that show us that you're in control, that you're you're really guiding as we surrender that decision to you, being faced with a decision, not knowing which way to go, left or right, that you guide us in that. Thank you for for yesterday and receiving the news that my that the day of July eighteenth of one eighty seven. It's amazing. May the, may each one of us have this experience, Lord. Open our eyes to them when they happen to appreciate them for what what they are and to let it have a give us an assurance by faith believing that today our life is in your hands and this be true for each one of us father sabbath blessings to us from you we ask and need and so much appreciate in jesus name amen